And some examples of this might be you build an interface for your file system. In, uh, so if you build a file system interface, you might have something like this. Interface, we'll call it FS for five. You know, it's very common to call file system, and I think Node even has one called FS. And we might have a method called read, you know, reader, which is going to read back, you know, and give us back a, you know, a list of uh, file, you know, a list of strings called files. Uh, we could have function read. Uh, read file, and it's going to return us back a string. And we could have a whole bunch of other things inside of here. Now, what we could do is I'm actually just going to rename this so it's a little bit more makes a little more sense. A file system. And then what we could do is we could have an implementation of the file system, and we might want to call that a real file system, or you know, let's just call it uh, Fat32 file system, which is a real file system, and it's going to implement a file system. And then what we'd have here, implement, oops, implement these members. And then we have to do something with each one of these members here. So we would read the file in a FAT32 method. And we would read this in a FAT, and read the directory in a FAT32 method. And then there's other file systems here. So let's just go and return an empty list just so we don't get a compiler error. And let's just go ahead and return an empty string. And of course, we would read a file. The file would probably have a path or whatever, and we're leaving it off for brevity at this point. Uh, then if we want to have an ext file system, so class ext file system, we can have file system here. Same thing. We need to implement those members. And we need to actually implement the other one too. And I'm just going to leave this to do there so we don't have the, the error. Now this is great because we have the ext file system, we have the fat32 file system, and we know that anytime we're working with a file system, we need to do something. Now lastly, we may have a, a very interesting one we have right here. So we have class memory file system. Why would we want this? Now this is very interesting here because we might just have something that allows us to, let's go ahead and implement these members. And we might be able to have an implementation here of memory file system where we take in and a constructor here, watch this, we say read directory, we take in files. So we take in a list of strings. And look, and what we're going to do here, and we take in a, a, the file contents, be string. And all I'm going to do here is just return files. That needs to be a val so we can actually work with it inside of the class. And the same thing down here. We'll return the file contents. So the interesting thing here is if we go back to our main uh, application, if for whatever reason, uh, inside of our main function here, we want it, if we were to work with just the file, you know, the file system, so we'll say, file system. And we're going to work with the, the FAT32 file system, right? Uh, and then we're going to do something with a file system. Blah, blah, blah. We could actually say, we're going to read this directory and it's going to read the directory. Now this would be very per pertinent to file32 FAT system. But what if we wanted our application to run on the ext file system? Well, now we're going to have to do like some, some if, L, if the if else statements to check what file system we're on or whatever. Or what could be provided to us during real time is actually a interface. So we might actually say something like this. File, file system, file system, right here. And remember, this is the interface here. And we can say equals fat 32 file system. Now that still works and we can still kind of do the same kind of thing we did before. And if we were using something like dependency injection, we could actually get this from a constructor which is beyond the scope of this, but we get it from a constructor uh, or a setter or something like that, uh, some variable, some, some, some type, in which, you know, we could set that pretty easily. Now, the real power from this comes in when we determine later on. So let's just actually do that now. We actually just create a method here. So we'll call get file system. So function get file system is going to return us a file system. Turn fat32 file system. Okay, there we go. And all we can do here is just say this. 
file system. Get file system. Now at that point in time, we can do this. Now the interesting thing here is if this was inside of uh, dependency injection or whatever, we could use the in-memory version. So if I'm writing a test, maybe I've just uh, moved this code into like a helper function somewhere. And then what I do is instead of this one, I say return memory file system. And then what I do is a you know, list of, you know, path to file, and then another, Another path. So remember this path of file pass, file contents. Go here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a in-memory file system. I'm kind of faking the whole thing. And then inside of my application, I could say file.read directory. And then what I can do is actually give a known list of files here. And so now I've actually and then enable myself to have different implementations. This is a contract. Remember, the contract says, hey, I'm going to read a directory and I know how to read a file. And if I read a file, I'm going to get back a string. And if I read a directory, I'm going to get back a list of strings. That's all I know how to do. I don't care how it's done. But on, on a FAT32 system, it's done differently than an EXT file system. And you know what? I may also build a memory file system, which allows me to provide the values to the actual file system so I can actually basically do this in memory or for testing, etc. So interfaces allow you to separate and think of them almost like shims. They allow you to kind of really decouple your application. And so they're just a way for you to communicate. It's a known contract between you and your application and what it can do.